If you're looking for cheap and instant Madden 17 coins on any platform, make sure to check out MobileMaddenCoins.com and use the discount code RBT for 10% off your purchase. Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is Samuel Brown, aka RBT, coming at you with another episode of the Tennessee Titans Madden 17 Connected Franchise Series. And I know it's been about a week since I have uploaded the episode. I know every time I upload a video when it's not the Titans franchise, everybody's like, where's the Titans video? Where's the Titans franchise? Well, guys, I want you to know that this series or connected franchise series in general is never going to go away on my channel you guys love it i like making the content so it's never going to go away the only problem was me being a full-time student and me having like a 19 hour semester this semester i'm spending a lot of my time studying a lot of time in this past week i've had so many exams guys and if you follow me on twitter I, I tweet like all the time i'm very active on social media so if you follow me on twitter you'll know when my videos are coming out and if they're not coming out why they're not so if you want to follow me on twitter there will be a link in the description below but i've just been very busy guys and i try to upload this series as much as possible trust me on that guys i enjoy making it just as much as you guys enjoy watching it so i apologize it's taken a while but i honestly try to make the series as often as i possibly can this is, it has been a while since the last episode has came out if you guys do want to see another episode of this series tomorrow which will be friday get this video to 1000 likes you guys have done it plenty of times before 1,000 likes by tonight, and there will 100% be another episode out tomorrow. And one more quick thing before we do get into today's episode, there are still some shirts available for you guys to purchase. There's very few of these shirts in black remaining, so if you do want to cop a black gotta be great shirt, there will be a link to my website to buy the shirt in the description box below. And with all that said, let's get into the episode. So this week we are traveling to New Miami Stadium to take on the 1-3 and Miami Dolphins. We did improve to 3-1 and in the last episode, so things are looking pretty good. But the first thing we are going to do in today's episode is try to re-sign Chance Hormack and Rashad Johnson. I think we're just going to let Vince Wilford go and just free up that cap space at the end of this year. But I definitely do want to re-sign Chance Warmack. And with the way Rashad Johnson has performed, he's played very well in the last couple episodes. I think he definitely deserves a new contract. He might not start because we do have the McCourty brother at safety, but I think he does deserve an extension on his contract. We're going to give him two years. We upped his salary up to 2.8. And why don't we go ahead and give him a sign-on bonus of 1.25. Come on, Rashad Johnson. That offer's just poor? What do you want? Like, what? I, I upped the offer from what the proposal was. So that was a fail. Now let's try to make sure we can get Chance Warmack. Over three years, we'll up this to 3.5. Let's go with 3.7. We'll give a 1.5 sign-in bonus. I think, or 1.69, because 69 is, is 69. We'll make this offer. I really want to get Chance Warmack re-signed. He's a young guard that's going to improve a lot, I believe. We'll make this offer. And that's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. So did he sign? He re-signed. Thank God. So we finally re-signed a player that I think is vital to our future. And now we just need to hopefully next week get Rashad Johnson re-signed. But I just don't know what he wants. A fair offer is what I'm giving him. And he's just not accepting them. Maybe I have to give him the three years. But I didn't want to because he's 30 years old. But if that's what it's going to have to take to get him, I guess I'll have to give him the three years. And crazy enough, the most thumbed up comment in the last video wasn't actually for me to trade for a player or a particular player to trade for. It was for me to trade away a particular player. And that player is in fact the wide receiver that is Devin Hester with 48 thumbs up. They were telling me to trade him to the Bears so he can finish his career in Chicago where it did start. He had such a good stretch as a kick and punt returner in the Bears organization. So we are going to offer him to the Bears. I'm not sure what we can get for him. But guys, something I'm thinking about doing, which would kind of mess up the rest of the comments, is seeing what they have at cornerback because we are going to attempt to trade Aqib Tlaib away in this episode. He's been playing poorly. He doesn't really fit my scheme. Everybody in the comments told me to trade him away. Everybody was giving me suggestions who to trade him for. But if I could package this deal and send Devin Hester and Aqib Tlaib to the Bears for a cornerback, who they have? Kyle Fuller. Kyle Fuller, I don't know if he's good enough. Is he actually good enough? We're actually going to try one trade really quick involving a keep to leave. Then we'll come back to Devin Hester and see what we can get from the Bears for Devin Hester. So the second most thumbed up comment in the previous video with 44 thumbs up gave me a list of like four or five players. But the player that makes the most sense I'm going to try to get in exchange for a keep to leave is in fact the cornerback. That's a very, very good and young cornerback, which is going to be Jalen Ramsey this might be very 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 hard to do I'm gonna see I, I genuinely don't know what the Jaguars if the Jaguars would accept this straight up 
Like, is that a good move? Like, the best young cornerback in the league, like an 81 overall already for an 89 veteran who's been playing awful for me, and we get 8 million taken off our cap hit. Well, I guess we've gained about 7 million here. So let's see. Like, if I could get Jalen Ramsey over Kyle Fuller, that would be nice. But just to be safe, I just want to throw in a second round draft pick and just see what the Jaguars say to this deal. And it's in the red. So should I just offer this straight up? Is this a good deal? I think this is actually a good deal. I don't think it's going to go through, but I just want to see how close it is. How close is... I don't think this is going to happen, guys. I genuinely don't think this is going to happen. I don't think I'm going to try any more than this. I really did want to try to get Jalen Ramsey, but I think this is going to be the move, guys. I'm going to try two six-round draft picks from next year's draft, along with the keep to leave, and if they don't accept this for Jalen Ramsey, I think I'm going to have to move on, and I still have to decide if whether I want to try to get Kyle Fuller along with that deal or just trade him straight up Devin Hester for a draft pick or something else. I don't know. We'll have to see, but... We so submit this offer, see how close it is. See, guys, it's going to take like a first round draft pick to get Jalen Ramsey along with the keep to leave, and I think I don't think it's worth it. Now we're going to revisit the Devin Hester to the Bears deal. I don't know what we can get for him. If we can just get some like a six round draft pick or something, I'll be fine. I'm just going to try to milk as much as I possibly can to start off with a fourth round draft pick and see what they say for Devin Hester. Their number one. That didn't look too promising whatsoever, so I don't even know if we'll get a seventh round draft pick from this year. <laughs> I genuinely don't think we'll get a 7th round draft pick from this year for Devin Hester. We might have to get the 7th from next year for the Bears. Oh my god, this is... We're not getting anything from Devin Hester. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. This year's 7th round draft pick? God, dude. We're probably going to get next year's 6th at... Or maybe the next year's 5th at best. Next year's 5th round draft pick for Devin Hester. Bears, come on, give it to me. It... Oh, boys. We might honestly not even get next year's 7th. I don't understand why they're, they, I mean, they're, they're disrespecting Devin Hester. I mean, he was such a big, vital piece of the organization for the longest time, and they won't even give me a freaking seventh round draft pick for him. God dang it. Next year's six. We're, we're genuinely going to get, like, the least amount possible. Wow. It might not even go through. I've never had a player not go through for next year's seventh round draft pick. So if this doesn't go through, this is, like, the first time ever this has happened. This is going to be really weird. It was accepted. So we do get next year's seventh round draft pick for Devin Hester after all that but I did what you guys said you wanted me to do trade Devin Hester back to the Chicago Bears so he could end his career there he really didn't do too much for me when it comes to the kick and punt return so we'll put somebody else there it really shouldn't be a big void we have to feel so I'm okay with the deal glad we got at least something out of it so I have three players right here when it comes to the top comments from the last video and each deal does involve a keep to leave so if one of these deals go through before I try out the rest that's just how it's gonna go so the first player with 16 thumbs up a young quarterback which is what I want to get for a keep to leave a young quarterback which is actually going to be the Giants quarterback, which is Eli Apple. A lot of people were responding to this comment and say they didn't like this deal. Some people said it was a really nice deal. I don't know if we'll be able to get him because I know it's a big difference between Eli Apple and Jalen Ramsey, but he's still a 78 overall rookie cornerback, which I would honestly not mind this deal at all. I mean, he's a young cornerback, and like I said, my plans going forward is to use my first round draft pick on a cornerback and a keep to leave just didn't do too much for us. He's actually been playing awful, hurting us more than he's helped us. He's an 89 overall. We probably could sign a very good player this offseason if we can free up this cap hit as well. So they're very interested in Keep Talib. So we're going to, like I said, try to milk as much as we possibly can out of this deal. Let's just throw in a third round draft pick and see if this goes through. It might be another deal we have to straight up offer Keep Talib for Eli Apple. How about a fifth round draft pick? We're getting there. What about a sixth? Oh, it's in the green now. It is definitely in the green. How about next year's fifth and next year's seventh? Along with Eli Apple for a keep to leave, and it's in the green still. Next year's seventh, next year's sixth, Eli Apple for a keep to leave. Except this Giants, please, it's still in the goddamn green. So, how about this? A keep to leave for Eli Apple and just next year's seventh round draft pick. Can we make it? It's gonna be straight up. It doesn't seem like it's worth it. It's gonna go through, I'm pretty sure, but is an 89 overall veteran. For a 78 overall rookie, worth it. Like, I'm sitting here contemplating whether I should do this or not. You know what? Screw it. Straight up a keep to leave for Eli Apple. Send him over. We'll get the cap pit off. Hopefully, he plays better than the keep to leave. Eli Apple, welcome to the tennis. Yeah. What the fuck? Genuinely cannot believe I'm going to offer this for a 78 overall rookie when I have a 89 overall player added into the deal. Just wow. This is going to go through, but. It it seems like I'm giving up way too much, but it's gonna have it's, it's what it took. All that time it takes an 89 overall player 
a seventh rounder for next year and a sixth rounder for next year for a 78 overall rookie cornerback who does not even fit our scheme. So at least we got to keep Tlaib off the books. He's traded. We got a player you guys wanted in the comments. I just, I really don't know how I feel about that, but we just got him off our books. Just forget we ever had to keep Tlaib and hopefully Eli Apple does play better. And we do need another wide receiver for depth purposes because we traded away Devin Hester. So I'm gonna sign one out of free agency. And we're actually gonna get this rookie Tyreek Hill because number one, he's a rookie and a young receiver. Number two, he went to West Alabama and one of my really good friends played quarterback at West Alabama. And number three, He's 95 speed, so he's a blazing fast wide receiver. He's definitely a developmental project. We are going to have to sign him off the Packers practice squad, but we needed another wide receiver. Welcome to the team, Tyreek Hill. And crazy enough, I'm going to go ahead and put Tyreek Hill as our kick and punt returner. He's an 89 overall kick and punt returner. We have to have a replacement for Devin Hester at those two positions. And I don't want Stephon Diggs playing in those positions because he could potentially get hurt. So I'm going to put Tyreek Hill there. At least he fills some void. And like I said, guys, we are going to try the other deals because we just traded away Keep to Leave who all those deals did involve. And I think, I mean... It could have been worse. It could have been worse than Eli Apple. At least he will get better as the series does go along. But if you guys still want to see some moves made in the next episode, we have three weeks until the trade deadline is over. So be sure to leave your suggestions, as always, in the comment section below for trades for me to try for next episode. And be sure to thumbs up the comments you do think would be awesome for the series. And as always, I will pick out the comments with the most thumbs up and then try to implement them and try them for the next episode. So with that said, guys, we're about to jump into this game against the Miami Dolphins, our first trip to New Miami Stadium. Hopefully we can get this W and improve to 4-1 on the year. Starting this game out of the pistol with a handoff to TJ Yeldon. Has a big hole up the middle. TJ Yeldon gets a nice five yards to start off this game. Third down of one. Going to hand the ball to the reliable veteran DeMarco Murray. Although they're bringing their safeties up, but I think we'll be okay. Got the run up the middle. DeMarco Murray gets just enough for the first. First pass attempt of the game. Going to go to Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker runs up the field. That's going to be close to another first down. Try out some play action right here. Hopefully we can get the blocks. We're going to throw it to Y out of the back. We're going to get sacked. We're going to get sacked in cunt second. Adamicon soon. The god dang backfield probably set them. Marcus Mariota's god dang ball sack. Third down and 18. It's going to take a miracle, but miracles have happened before in this series. Oh, God. Just throwing this to Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker goes up. Oh, my God. He about pulled a Tyron Pro throw. First down and 10. Stay in our zones. He's throwing it deep. Calvin Pryor. Make this play, bro. Calvin. Huh. Huh. That's a good start. That's a, that's a really good start. Like, look at this. I was running the route better than he was. Like, huh. Huh. Gonna try some quick slants right here. Nobody's open. Nobody's open. Nobody's open. Just run. Scramble. B's wide open. Make this throw, Mariota. That's gonna be Josh Gordon. Let's go. Josh Gordon gets into the end zone, boys. And we tie things up just like that. I thought we were about to get sacked. Nice job for Mariota using his mobility to get outside the pocket. Nice throw on the run as well. That play pretty much completely set up by Marcus Mariota's mobility in the pocket. Big play as we tie things up. 7-7. Seven to seven. Well, at least our defense has stayed on the field more on this drive than they did the previous drive. Ryan Chase here in the backfield. Big hit. Arian Foster's going nowhere. Sets up for a third down and seven. Come on, boys. Play action pass. Nobody's actually. He's wide open. Third down and one. We're going to be bringing pressure. Can we get to him? Come on, Ryan Chase here. We force a first down. That's what we forced. So as you see, it was actually Devontae Parker who was injured on that last play, which is actually good for me because he's already had a huge game. It's going to be a handoff to Arian Foster, and I just completely ran out my zone. Rashad Johnson flips Arian Foster, but it's a first down, so who gives a F? Come on, Ryan Chazier. He's there. Oh, God. I thought that was a pass. We're going to get the sack. We missed two sacks. We missed two sacks. Oh, my God. That was awful display of defense for me. That was complete awful display of defense for me. I dove like an absolute god dang blind pelican leading to the touchdown pass. That's two instances I could have easily sacked the quarterback. Ryan says he was running free, and I thought it was going to be a run, so I was trying to big hit the god dang running back. And then Calvin Pryor, second time getting beat deep. And that's the second touchdown. Third down and five. Can we, in fact, pick this up? Hey, he's going to be open, and no, we're going to get sacked. What's the flag for? Be something good. Be holding downfield. Be defensive. It's probably going to be offensive holding, even though we got sacked. What is this? Face mask against the defense. Oh, miracles. Who other than Anamikon Sue playing dirty? Third down and four. Chris Johnson checks into this game for the first time. Let's see if Josh Gordon can beat his man off the press for the slant route. No, A's going to be open to Lenny Walker. Makes this catch just enough for the first down, I think. I think. Oh, my God. Fourth and one. We need you, D. Murray. One yard is all we need. We're going to get it and some more. Play action pass right here. 
Tim Tebow is going to make the catch. Going to get a first down. Tim Tebow, let's go. Tim Tebow gets it to the end zone for his first touchdown as the Tennessee Titan. Let's freaking go. Or he might have ran for a touchdown early on in the season. But that was his first receiving touchdown as a Titan coming out of the tight end position. Didn't do too much. He's got some separation on the linebacker from the Dolphins. And aside from that, just followed his blocks. Got past a couple Dolphin defenders and actually outran a couple as he gets into the end zone to tie things up. Aiden Foster Check out the middle. Huge the 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 fumble. Boy, pick up. We get the ball. Let's go. Was that Rashad Johnson who knocked that ball loose again? Cameron Wake recovers. We get a huge turnover as we can potentially take the lead now. We got the ball in good field position. I want to see who, in fact, did force this turnover. And what did I tell you guys? Rashad Johnson 100% deserves to remain on this team beyond this year. He's on a one-year deal right now. And the guy, I don't, I don't care what it takes. If we have to offer him a three-year deal to get him to accept, we're going to get him to accept because this guy's playing lights out for us. We're going to try to hit him deep, boys. Josh Gordon, he's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Come on, Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon remains a freaking beast of a deep threat, boys. Makes the big catch right there down to the six-yard line. Marcus Mariota having one of the biggest halves of the year so far, 169 yards through the air, just through about a quarter and a half. Oh, God. Kevin Dodd, shoulder tear, will not be able to return for this game. That, uh... That doesn't sound too good. After I was trying to be cute passing the ball, we got sacked, and now it's the second to go from the 12-yard line. But can we make up for that sack right here? Play action pass. Stephon Diggs. Come on, make this catch, bro. Stephon Diggs. Let's go. 21-14. This offense continues its absolute explosiveness. That's our third touchdown pass of the half as we now take the lead 21-14. Come on, boys. Let's get pressure on Tanny Hill. Come on, D'Amico Ryan's just did just this. Just fuck. A little bit, just a cut second more. Ron Tannehill, 6-6, six six, 142 yards, two touchdowns. Glad my secondary is playing very, very well in the absence of keep to lead, making me look like a very, very good decision maker. Third down and nine, let's at least hold him to a field goal so we can regain, or actually retain the lead, that is. He throws it inside, Jason McCourty! Let's go! Can we get the pick six? Jason McCourty beat that fat lineman. Come on, duke inside. <laughs> he just makes Ron Tannehill look like an absolute imbecile. What a play, Jason McCourty. I just want to see this replay. I just want to see this replay. Freaking boom, Ron <laughs> That's actually the worst I've ever seen an attempt when it comes to a quarterback making a tackle. Third down and 10. Really don't want that interception just to go for naught. I want to get something off of that interception. Chris Johnson has the speed to pick up this first. Can he do it? Chris Johnson, he's not going to get it, is he? We're kind of in no man's land, though. Or, or can we kick this field goal? Can we do it? A 55-yard field goal, boys. I'm going to attempt it. I am, in fact, going to attempt this right here. Let's do it. We got to get full power. And we did. Can we make it? Can we make it? It's going to go... Oh my god, no! Dude, I got full freaking power, and it had a nine yard win to my back. Bringing pressure. Get there, Shazier. Get there, Shazier. Shazier forces an errant throw. Third down and three. Third and three. Let's be great. Let's be great. Get the sack, Cameron Wake. There we go. We're going to get the ball back with about a minute left. We have one timeout. We can still make something out of this drive. One deep safety that is Shaden Larry Fitzgerald to the left. So this is where having two. Huge deep threats come in handy. So Josh Gordon might be the move here, depending on what the safety does do. Oh, God. We're going to scramble here. This isn't looking good. This is not looking good. This isn't... You know what? Josh Gordon, make this catch, bro. Come back, Josh. That's going to be a pick. That's going to be a pick. Oh, my God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God he has god dang stone hands. Is that Brent Grimes? Thank God your hands don't exist. Third and five. Mixing things up. Running some man right here. Come on, boys, and he's going to be wide open. Jason McCourty beat that time for the first. Come on, Shazier, get there. Get there. Forces an errant throw or off-balance throw, but it doesn't matter. Still finds Jordan Cameron for the first. That actually was not a first down, and we just got a sack with Anthony Ball, which now sets up for a third down and seven, boys. We're not giving up another one, are we? We're going to force pressure, and the ball's going to be thrown out of the back of the end zone as it is going to be a fourth down, which they're probably going to settle for the field goal, and, you know, the computer never misses, so 21-17. Second and five run here with D. Murray. D. Murray, follow your blocks. D. Murray has a hold to the outside. Big play from DeMarco Murray. Knocked out of bounds at the Miami Dolphins' 39-yard line. Josh Gordon deep might be the move. He has a guy beat. He has him beat. Josh Gordon into the end zone, boys. He's shot. Oh, God. That's a freaking foul. Trying to goddamn break his femur in the freaking back of the end zone after he scored 15 minutes ago. But Josh Gordon, guys, like I was saying, 
The guy's an absolute tank. I cannot believe I got him for what I got him for earlier on in the season. Like, absolutely insane. The fact that he's a 76 overall is just blasphemy, man. He's an absolute beast. Gets another big touchdown catch in today's game as we take an 11-point lead, 28-17. to Oh, God, I completely ran out of my zone. Sets up for a big catch there from Sims. Is Sims can get to the end zone? Nah. Close enough, though. Come on, boys. Get pressure. Get the sack. Oh, my God, dude. That's the second time I've done that this game, man. Just dove like an absolute imbecile when I had a chance to get pressure, get the sack. And Ryan Tannehill finds a guy downfield for a touchdown pass. So, they're going for two, which is good, which is just great. I'm happy, and I'm running quarters from the goal line, which is probably not the smartest thing. But I'm not going to take the time to call a timeout because I don't feel like it. Because we're going to get the stop regardless. Because Ryan Tannehill is going to get the big stop and the big hit. They're not getting the two-point conversion as we still remain on top by five. Well, after a brilliant sack, it's second and 17. As Chris Johnson does check into this game, going to flip the run to the left side eventually. Eventually, there we go. Let's see if we can get some of this yardage back. Chris Johnson has the speed to the outside. Come on, Chris Johnson. Can he get all 17? And he does, boys. Chris Johnson is still showing at about 95 years old. He has a ton of... What? How did we not get the first down? From the speed of Chris Johnson straight to the strength of DeMarco Murray, who's going to pick up this cunt here to get the first down. And he's getting a little bit more as we get close to midfield, boys. DeMarco Murray's been so good the past couple episodes into this game on third and short situations. Going to give the ball to him again since he's been so reliable. We need one yard, bro. We have a huge hole. That one was completely set up by the interior of the offensive line. Can Josh Gordon beat his corner once again? Come on, Josh Gordon. You can do it, bro. Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon again, dude. It's a freaking glitch. He's such a freaking glitch. That's Marcus Mariota's fifth touchdown pass on the game. And don't discredit him either. Although I'm giving, it seems like, all the credit to Josh Gordon. He makes a little move and gets just enough separation on the corner to beat him for the touchdown pass. But if that ball's not thrown completely on target by Marcus Mariota, it's not going to be a touchdown. And he's had five touchdown passes already. Come on, get pressure, force pressure, or just force a wide open receiver. Ryan Tannehill, gotta give him credit, has been fantastic throwing the ball on the run and finding open receivers as we do injure another one of the receivers. That's their second receiver we have injured this game. And who other? The Rashad Johnson laying the big hit and injuring another Miami Dolphin. Don't know who the receiver crew is? Me neither. Because we've injured so many goddamn Dolphins. But second down and five, bringing pressure here on Tannehill. It's been working well so far this game. And we're going to bring pressure. Oh, if that linebacker jumps up. That would have been a pick. Oh, God, Brian Arakpo's hurt. Brian Arakpo is hurt. Now, if we have a second outside linebacker hurt in this game for an extended period of time, that's not going to be good. He's just sitting there on the sideline. Looks like it's a rib injury as he's holding his rib. We already had Kevin Dodd, who's a very good young outside linebacker who's been playing the second middle linebacker position, hurt in this game. And now Brian Arakpo's hurt. Great. Gotta love life. Gotta love it. Third and eight, and now Aaron Wallace, who was just previously signed for the practice squad in the last episode, is his replacement. We get the stop, set up a fourth down and nine, and they are gonna punt the ball? Are you actually kidding me? Our second outside linebacker... The same exact position right outside linebacker, both with shoulder tears in the same exact game. Things are looking very, very good for us, boys. So after a very weird sequence of plays and penalties that I'm not going to include in the video, because the video is already probably at 25 minutes by now, we have a first down and 10 from the 26, bringing in TJ Yeldon, who has not done much in this game. Going to get a handoff up the middle, gets a... About seven yards. Nice carry. He only has six rushes for 18 yards. So, actually going to throw the ball right here. Just don't do nothing dumb. Just run with Marcus Mariota to slide. We have too many people injured this game. Just freaking slide for the first. And another top comment in the last video was play Cameron Clear. He's in a couple of my formations that I don't usually run. But just for you guys, he's going to get the ball right here. He's going to get it, hopefully. Now he's not open. A fumble! Oh, God! Oh, God. Lay out Collins. Just go, bro. Well, let's try this again with Cameron Clear. We're getting the ball in his hands. Or not. Where he's not going to get open. Come on, Cameron Clear. Cameron Clear is open. The GOAT. What the? <laughs> he, like, wouldn't run to the ball. Well, third down and 18. Gotta love life. Gotta love it. Oh, great. Face mask. Great. Good job, McCourty. Good. Really good. Real nice. Real nice. My antics there with Cameron Clear is probably going to get the Dolphins right back into this one. Oh, he got to run it back out of the backfield. We get the big hit. It's big no, 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 I ain't believing that, am not, 100% not believing that, they're gonna score next play, guaranteed, 100% guaranteed, oh god, I was supposed to be covering the running back in the freaking Carew, god dang Carew has been killing me ever since I made fun of him, because nobody knows who he is, me included, just got the first down at the five yard line, been killing me, third down and goal, empty set, let's be great right here, 
Not the check down. Not the check down. You can scramble. I don't care. Just scramble. Or, or scramble for the touchdown. No, no, no. That's a pick. He finds the hands of Anthony Barr the first time he's thrown the ball on the run. And it's been picked off. From the pick earlier, was that on the run? I don't know. I don't know. All that matters is we got another interception, this time in the red zone. Honestly, all I'm doing at this point is just completely messing up Mariota's stats. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be worth it. We got to get the GOAT the ball. He he's not open. Come on, the GOAT. Come on, GOAT. Make this catch. Finally! Since the Dolphins are calling their timeouts, we're going to get Cameron Clear. Oh, dude. God, no effing way. That's what I get. That's honestly what I get. That's 100% what I god dang. What, are we going to catch him? Going to catch him? Well, nope. Rip. Effing, 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 effing rip. That's what I get. That's what I get. I'm trying to force the ball in the god dang hands of Cameron effing Clear. That's a salty way to end the video, isn't it? But... We get the win officially 35 to 30. It should have been 23, but anyways, I'm still happy with the performance. We do have a big game for Marcus Mariota as he technically shouldn't have thrown that last interception. That was all my fault. He actually threw like eight incompletions on that last drive that you probably didn't see because I was trying to force the ball in the hands of Cameron Clear. The stats from this game, Marcus Mariota 15 to 28 with 118 quarterback rating, 318 yards, five touchdowns, which has to be his career high. One interception, as you just saw, should have been five touchdowns, no interceptions. I'm kind of salty about that. We did get two interceptions, though, from Ron Tannehill, who did actually have a pretty good game aside from those two picks. But let's sort this just to our stats. Rushing the football, not too much success. Last game, we had a lot more, especially when it came to splitting the carries. But DeMarco Murray, still a respectable game. 11 carries, 62 yards. Not much from TJ Yeldon and Chris Johnson. They have two carries for 23 yards. He's definitely a really good change of pace back, Chris Johnson is, especially with his speed. And now receiving even boys look at this dude you guys don't know how happy i am i decided to give josh gordon a chance because he's absolutely freaking amazing dude now that he's actually came back from suspension which it should have technically been this week but i might have made a little blunder in the last episode completely has changed our offense having two deep threats in larry fitzgerald and josh gordon granted larry fitzgerald hasn't done much since josh gordon's came back but if that is the case and it's helping our offense by everybody sticking on larry fitzgerald and giving josh gordon one-on-one -on -one situations which he's absolutely annihilating the cornerbacks in if we can keep putting up the points that we are man it is absolutely worth it four receptions 187 yards three touchdowns boys and look at tim tebow also adding a touchdown, three receptions for 47 yards. Ryan Shazier with a huge game, nine tackles, four tackles for loss. Rashad Johnson, eight total tackles, one for loss. And Anthony Barr, good game, three for loss as well. We only had two sacks from Anthony Barr and Cameron Wake. And the sad thing is the most important thing from this episode isn't the fact that we actually won the game. It's when I'm about to jump back into the franchise screen and see how long our two outside linebackers are out for. Here we go. Two new injuries, and they're both the same exact position, same exact injury. So they're probably both going to be out for the same amount of time. So shoulder tear sounds pretty brutal. Sounds pretty freaking brutal. Shoulder tear, five weeks, four weeks. So we're going to be without... Our two top right outside linebackers, and like I said, Kevin Dodd has been playing the second middle linebacker role since, since I run 3-4s. He's always on the field. But that's a pretty big injury. And with that, four huge players in our team are now injured. Derrick Henry, Kevin Dodd, Brian Arakpo, and Devin McCourty, who we've not been able to see in this whole entire regular season of this series. So... That sucks pretty bad, but with that said, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode. Hopefully, you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to drop a like, and like I said, a 1,000 likes by tonight, and there will be another episode out tomorrow. And with that said, guys, and with those injuries, keep that in mind when it comes to suggesting players to trade for in the next episode. We're definitely going to need to pick up another right outside linebacker if for anything depth purposes. We're just an outside linebacker in general. We're down to our rookie, Aaron Wallace, who just got promoted last episode from the practice squad. Granted, he has been playing very well and has made some pretty big plays in these two episodes, but we do need a better right outside linebacker. But keep in mind as well, we don't have much to trade away. So suggest realistic options when it comes to outside linebackers and be sure to thumbs up the comments that you think would be awesome to implement into the series and it doesn't just have to be outside linebackers we make sure some of you do suggest outside linebackers because we do need to pick one up in the next episode and i want to pick up somebody you guys do want to see in the series and make sure it is a realistic option but with that said guys be sure to pick up your godly be gray shirts at the link in the description box below and like i said if you want to follow me on twitter to keep up with like what's going on with me in my life and if I'm, whether i'm uploading an episode of the series or not or why i'm not be sure to follow me on Twitter. Link will be in the description box below as well. With all that said, guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow.
Peace.